Morning, Julia. Um, I mean, there's no doubt at all there are some really big concerns about, obviously, the, the processes for and failures of the processes to stop uh, Lucy Letby from killing. A lot of focus now is going on the, the, the managers, the NHS managers, who, who failed to act despite you know, whistleblowers saying again and again. I mean, seven paediatricians in one unit saying, please stop this nurse from working on this unit. We think uh, she's responsible for babies' deaths not being taken seriously. Indeed, them being forced to write a letter of apology by the HR department. I mean, extraordinary scenes. Um, is there any chance, do you think, that there will be someone in management who is going to be brought to task for this, possibly even facing corporate manslaughter charges? Well, that's why we need the police investigation to be widened uh, to look at not, not just the possibility that Lucy let be uh, carried out further murders. I mean, there are reports today that, 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 that 30 deaths are... Um, under investigation potentially um, uh, as possibly suspicious in which he may have been involved but also we obviously need to look at those wider failings as well now that's a, a, a more difficult task because let's understand this Lucy let be alone was responsible for murdering those babies and trying to kill others only she is responsible for it but clearly uh, it would appear from what we've seen so far remember we've only had partial accounts we do have to be careful about that yep. from some but it would appear that concerns were raised early on, that those concerns were brushed aside or ignored or not acted upon as they should have been. And therefore, uh, an inquiry has to examine whether the people who didn't act on those concerns are culpable in some way, whether that's an, the institution in terms of corporate uh, manslaughter or the individuals concerned in terms of gross negligence manslaughter. Yeah. Those are some of the issues that, that need to be looked at. But that's a complex task for the police and also the inquiry. And I do agree, it must have the full powers. Yeah. I find it baffling that the government has set up an inquiry, said it's going to be independent, but it won't have statutory powers. Um, they, they've done this before with other big cases and incidents where they set up an inquiry and then they're forced... Yeah, uh, inevitably. To, to, ..to give it the full powers to have a judge or a senior legal figure in charge. Um, and I don't know why they just don't preempt all that and do it from the off. Also, they could have had all this ready to go, you know, you know, just in case there were, as many had expected, uh, guilty verdicts anyway, given even the evidence we heard in court. Um, we're told again and again that lessons will be learned, but I have to say I was hopping mad all weekend by this awful phrase and was saying on the show earlier, you know, the one thing we can be sure about is lessons aren't going to be learned. Why is it that institutions, whether it's, you know, police uh, uh, services, or wh uh, whether it's uh, hospitals, whether, what, you know, whatever it is, why is it so hard for these institutions to learn lessons? You've been a, you know, a correspondent in, in this field for so many years. When, when we, social services departments, when children are left by social workers with obviously dangerous you know, parents, like, why, why is there such difficulty in institutions learning the lessons and then not making the same mistakes again? I think it's because they don't have people from the outside who are embedded within that institution who are there giving advice along the way. Obviously, there's an inquiry. An inquiry has external experts who will give their recommendations. But then the follow up, I think what you need is people from the outside who are not connected to that institution who are there alongside saying, right, you've got to do this. Now you've got to act upon this. This doesn't look right. Why aren't you doing that? Yeah. And that's what I think is needed. I mean, you know, I've seen it a lot in the police um, and where police forces are not open to outside help. That's where you get this uh, institutional sort of um, reputation yeah. Um, uh, control. And, and, and these urge to protect the institution, protect your job, you know, whistleblowers yeah. being punished rather than rewarded for coming forward. Can I ask you just finally about Lucy Letby not having to turn up, uh, not even for the end of her, the verdicts being given. Oh, that, that happened obviously over a longer period than we, obviously we all had the verdicts on Friday, but actually it had been over a couple of weeks. There were so many cases to hear from. Um, and, uh, and, and and she did apparently not going to turn up to the sentencing today. I just I mean I did loads of court reporting for years I as a news reporter I don't remember this being a thing is this something is this a new thing that we've got people we had this with Olivia Pratt Corbell and her killer and another case as well before then of of people who have been found guilty of the most heinous crimes um, not appearing in court it does seem to be a recent trend I think you're absolutely right Julia um, I, I've reported a lot of court cases the defendant the, the, the guilty party always turned up for sentencing uh, but it has i've seen a, a recent trend in the last few years when um it, when they when they don't show 
um, you know, the ultimate humiliation to have to sit there, listen uh, to the statements from the victims or uh, relatives of the victims, and then the judges' comments condemning them and they don't appear in court. I, I do take issue with you. I don't think it will be appropriate for a defendant to be dragged kicking and screaming into the dock. Why not? To scream in the dock. Then, then the sentence is all about them, and I don't think that's right. It's not all about them. It should be a dignified occasion for the victims and their relatives to be able to say how this has affected them and for the judge's remarks to be heard in dignified silence. I think if the defendant can't do that, then they shouldn't be there. The san there should be sanctions for defendants or... What, what, what is the sanction for uh, someone who's facing a whole life tariff? Well, I, I think that's almost an impossible situation, Julia, because she is going to get a whole life tariff. She will never be released from prison. There's no doubt about that. 